Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic discussion is measurement using the oscilloscope. Our objective is to learn how to use the oscilloscope to measure basic properties of AC waveforms, including peak value, peak to peak value, period, and frequency. We'll examine traditional manual methods, as well as time-saving automated methods offered by some modern oscilloscopes. If you recall in the Introduction to Oscilloscopes lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel, we learned how to properly vertically and horizontally scale, position, trigger, couple, and attenuate a voltage signal for display purposes. Today, we'll use the oscilloscope to measure basic properties of an AC waveform. For the purposes of today's lecture, we'll be making use of the Tektronix TBS 1032B digital oscilloscope. This in no way is meant to be neither an exhaustive review of this tool nor an endorsement of this particular manufacturer or model. I only wish to present the functions of interest on a representative example so the viewer can gain some practical exposure to these functions and interpret the manner in which results are displayed. If you recall, I issued a directive at the end of the aforementioned lecture that went as such. All use of all instrumentation, including the oscope, in all scenarios must at all times be preceded by one event. That one event being, do the calculations first. You need to know everything you can about the waveform under inspection in advance, set up the instrumentation to respond to these conditions, and be smart enough to recognize when something is amiss. In this spirit, consider a time-variant voltage waveform with the following characteristics. It is sinusoidal in nature, has an effective or RMS value of 4.5 volts, and a frequency of 50 hertz. It should be well within your capacity to calculate peak value, peak to peak value, and period. By all means, pause the lecture and do so now. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. A waveform with an effective value of 4.5 volts and a frequency of 50 hertz has a peak value of approximately 6.4 volts, a peak to peak value of approximately 12.7 volts, and a period of 20 milliseconds. Calculations complete, we are now free to move on to the remaining steps. Our task is to set up the oscope to display this waveform and measure these properties. We first need to properly scale the vertical voltage and horizontal time axis and position the trace on the screen to accommodate this waveform. Additionally, we need to set up proper triggering conditions, select an appropriate coupling option, and establish the level of attenuation for our probes and scope. Given we anticipate a 6.4 volt peak value and our display includes eight divisions top to bottom, a vertical sensitivity of two volts per division might do the trick. Given this sensitivity, we should anticipate the waveform to peak slightly more than three divisions above and below the horizontal axis. Given we anticipate a 20 millisecond period and the oscope display includes 10 divisions left to right, a horizontal sensitivity of 5 milliseconds per division might do the trick. Given this horizontal sensitivity, we should anticipate a full cycle to be roughly 4 divisions wide on our display to accommodate 2 plus full cycles. Given this waveform is AC, we could probably leave the channel 1 trace vertically positioned right in the middle of the screen. Since we're placing the waveform on channel 1, let's trigger off channel 1 using the rising edge at 0 volts. This establishes the zero crossing going positive as the one beat for sampling purposes. Since this waveform is entirely AC, viewing it in either DC or AC coupling mode will accomplish the same purpose. Let's leave coupling in DC just to make sure the waveform doesn't include any DC offset. Regarding attenuation, I'm using a probe with 1x or no attenuation and I've made the oscope aware that this is the case. When I hook up the channel 1 probe to a function generator producing the sample waveform, I am rewarded with a stunning snapshot that meets my earlier expectations. It's not distorted, deformed, dorked up, and importantly, I didn't waste my time. Do the calculations first and set your oscope up in advance as asked and you too will be rewarded with usable results in less time. Do anything less than this and you will waste time on nonsense. Moving on, let's now measure the properties of this waveform. We'll first examine the traditional manual method and then examine more sophisticated use of cursors and automated time-saving measurement techniques. Manual measurement techniques, in contrast to the automated methods, are open to some interpretation. However, the values obtained should be close to your anticipated results. While admittedly primitive, these techniques are essential to the conceptual understanding of oscopes and are not to be dismissed. You never know when someone may ask you this on a quiz or an exam. Hint. Hint. 
Manual measurement using an oscilloscope is really just a game of unit conversion. The advantage being, given vertical and horizontal sensitivity are independently adjustable, a user has a degree of control over the conversion factor. Additionally, given a trace can be repositioned up, down, left, or right on the screen, a user can take advantage of various markers to obtain more accurate results. You know, within each vertical and horizontal division, five subdivisions exist, where each subdivision represents one-fifth, or 0.2, of a full division. Given we've currently established the vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division, each subdivision represents 0.2 times 2 volts, or 0.4 volts. If we change the scale, this unit conversion would change. We can horizontally reposition the waveform using the horizontal position knob until our peak value aligns with a convenient vertical axis. Note the waveform peaks approximately 3.4 divisions above the horizontal axis. Given the current vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division, this corresponds to a value of 3.4 divisions times 2 volts per division, or approximately positive 6.8 volts, slightly higher than we anticipated. We can do the same for the negative half of the cycle. We horizontally reposition the waveform until our valley aligns with the vertical axis. Note the waveform valleys between 3 and 3.2 divisions below the horizontal axis. Let's say 3.1 divisions. Given the current vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division, this corresponds to a value of 3.1 divisions times 2 volts per division, or negative 6.2 volts, slightly lower than we anticipated. This being said, given a peak of positive 6.8 and a value of negative 6.2, it can be demonstrated this correlates to a peak-to-peak -peak value of approximately 13 volts, slightly higher than we anticipated, but in the ballpark. Recall we set up a function generator and verified it using the AC voltmeter and frequency measurement function. On casual inspection, the DMM says this waveform has an effective value of 4.5 volts and a frequency of 50 Hz. However, the oscilloscope shows you the output of the function generator isn't perfectly balanced, and our display allows us to see this dirty detail. What's the deal? Does this waveform include a slight positive DC offset? When we switch to AC coupling mode, the oscilloscope removes the DC component and the waveform imperceptibly shifts down, indicating there was a very, very tiny DC offset. However, it's pretty negligible. The real source of the problem is the function generator really is generating an imbalanced sine wave where the positive half really is larger than the negative half. Is this a deal breaker? It depends upon the application. However, because of the oscilloscope, you're now aware of the somewhat shoddy output and aren't just taking the voltmeter's word for it that everything's fine. Let's now manually measure period. To do so, one horizontally repositions the waveform until one zero crossing going positive aligns with the end of a division. Note the next zero crossing going positive is roughly four divisions away. Given the current horizontal sensitivity of five milliseconds per division, this corresponds to a value of four divisions times five milliseconds per division, or 20 milliseconds exactly as we anticipated. It can be demonstrated by taking the inverse of this measured period value that our frequency is 1 over 20 milliseconds, or 50 hertz. The astute and observant among you may have noticed that the oscilloscope has already gone to the trouble of performing the calculation for you and is displaying a frequency of 49.9 hertz, essentially 50 hertz in the lower right-hand corner. You note our current level of accuracy for manual calculations can be slightly improved upon by increasing our horizontal sensitivity to 2.5 milliseconds per division. You note at this increased level of sensitivity, the two zero crossings going positive are now separated by eight divisions. Given the current horizontal sensitivity of 2.5 milliseconds per division, this corresponds to a value of eight divisions times 2.5 milliseconds per division, or 20 milliseconds as previously. Ultimately, we arrived at the same values, although at this increased level of horizontal sensitivity, we're keenly aware of any minor errors that might have earlier escaped our notice. Really, that's all there is to be said about manual measurement using an oscilloscope. It's a game of unit conversion, and one can reposition or rescale the output to get the best results. Let's test your understanding of manual measurement using the oscope with the following example problems. For each set on the left, calculate peak and effective voltage and period and frequency 
given the vertical and horizontal sensitivities as displayed on the screen. For each set on the right, given the effective value and frequency, determine how many vertical divisions the peak value and how many horizontal divisions the period would encompass given the specified vertical and horizontal sensitivity. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. Don't make this hard. It's a game of unit conversion. This being said, be careful because there might be some tricks out there. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following values. The first plot in the first example problem shows a signal peaking at approximately 1.6 divisions above the horizontal axis. Given the vertical sensitivity of 5 volts per division, this correlates to a peak value of 1.6 divisions times 5 volts per division, or approximately 8 volts. This peak value correlates to an effective or RMS value of approximately 5.7 volts. The second plot in the first example problem shows that the same signal has been repositioned and horizontally rescaled. It looks like the two zero crossings going positive are approximately 7.2 divisions apart. Given the horizontal sensitivity of 1 millisecond per division, this correlates to a period of 7.2 divisions times 1 millisecond per division, or 7.2 milliseconds. A period of 7.2 milliseconds correlates to a frequency of approximately 138.8 Hz. The first plot in the second example problem shows a signal peaking at approximately 2.8 divisions above the horizontal axis. Given the vertical sensitivity of 1 volt per division, this correlates to a peak value of 2.8 divisions times 1 volt per division, or 2.8 volts. This peak value correlates to an effective value of approximately 2 volts. The second plot in the second example problem shows the same signal repositioned and horizontally rescaled. It looks like the two zero crossings going positive are approximately 5.8, maybe 5.9 divisions apart. Given the horizontal sensitivity of 100 microseconds per division, this correlates to a period of 5.9 divisions times 100 microseconds per division, or 590 microseconds. A period of 590 microseconds correlates to a frequency of 1,694.9 Hz, or approximately 1.7 kHz. The third and fourth example problems are the same songs in reverse. This time we've been given effective values and frequency, and being asked to predict what these waveforms might look like when displayed on an oscope with a given vertical and horizontal sensitivities. The third example problem has an effective value of 1.7 volts which correlates to a peak value of approximately 2.4 volts. At a vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division, this would necessitate 2.4 volts over 2 volts per division, or approximately 1.2 divisions. The same waveform has a frequency of 500 hertz, which correlates to a period of 2 milliseconds. At a horizontal sensitivity of 250 microseconds per division, this would necessitate 2 milliseconds over 250 microseconds per division, or approximately 8 divisions. When displayed on an oscope using these agreed upon vertical and horizontal sensitivities, the waveform does indeed appear to be peaking 1.2 divisions above the center line, and the two zero crossings going positive are separated by approximately 8 divisions. The fourth example problem has an effective value of 6.5 volts, which correlates to a peak value of approximately 9.2 volts. At a vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division, this would necessitate 9.2 volts over 2 volts per division, or approximately 4.1 divisions. This ain't gonna work. Given an oscope screen typically has 8 vertical divisions, and the center line runs right down the middle of it, we're to clip the very peaks off the top of this waveform. This same waveform has a frequency of 15 Hz, which correlates to a period of 66.7 milliseconds. At a horizontal sensitivity of 5 milliseconds per division, this would necessitate 66.7 milliseconds over 5 milliseconds per division, or approximately 13.3 divisions. This also is not going to work. Given an oscope screen typically has 10 horizontal divisions, we're only going to see part of a full cycle. When displayed on an oscope using these agreed upon vertical and horizontal sensitivities, the tips of the peaks are indeed lost in the clouds, and we're only seeing part of a full cycle. Secret example problem 5. 
What do I do to display this waveform in its entirety? The answer is change the vertical and horizontal sensitivity. Let's use a vertical sensitivity of 5 volts per division and a horizontal sensitivity of 10 milliseconds per division. When rescaled and repositioned, the oscilloscope shows the complete peak-to-peak -peak range and a complete cycle. The positive peak appears to be 1.8 divisions or 9.2 volts tall, and the two zero crossings going positive appear to be separated by maybe 6.7 divisions or 66.7 milliseconds. Moving on, if the manual measurement method seems low-tech and somewhat inaccurate, you're right. A lot of the inaccuracy for manual measurements stems from differences in interpretation. However, this method should still yield results inside an expected range. Luckily, modern oscopes offer more sophisticated means of measuring data. These automated methods are quicker and more accurate, however necessitate a bit of learning curve because each oscope manufacturer and model does it ever so slightly different. Despite their increased accuracy and speed, these shortcuts don't mean you can forget how to make these measurements manually. The Tektronix TBS 1032B offers two means of automated data measurement, cursors and automatic. Let's examine the cursor method first. Let's explore application of the cursor measurement feature by way of an example. Let's use the same waveform we initiated the lecture with, one with an effective value of 4.5 volts and a frequency of 50 hertz. This corresponds to a peak value of approximately 6.4 volts in a period of 20 milliseconds. Displayed on the oscope with a vertical sensitivity of 2 volts per division and a horizontal sensitivity of 2.5 milliseconds per division, it appears to peak out at 3.2, 3.3-ish divisions above the horizontal axis, and the distance between the two zero crossings going positive looks to be 8 divisions. We could do the math, however, the cursor tool can do it for us. Cursors are accessible via the cursor button in the operations group. Cursors come in two types, amplitude and time. Let's check out the amplitude cursor first. Inside the cursor menu, select the amplitude cursor. First, select cursor 1 and drag it to the bottom of the waveform using the multifunction knob. Then select cursor 2 and drag it to the top of the waveform using the multifunction knob. Looks like cursor 1 is at negative 6.16 volts and cursor 2 is at positive 6.64 volts. The differential between them appears to be 12.8 volts. 2. Easy. The cursor tool shows our earlier math was slightly off, however it does confirm our earlier suspicion that this wave is slightly top-heavy. The time cursor can be used to measure period in a similar fashion. Inside the cursor menu, select the time cursors. In a repeat of the previous method, select cursor 1 and drag it to the first zero crossing going positive using the multifunction knob. Then select cursor 2 and drag it to the next zero crossing going positive using the multifunction knob. Looks like the differential appears to be 20.1 milliseconds, which corresponds to a frequency of 49.7 Hz, close to our desired 50 Hz. 2. Easy. The cursor tool does the work for you. If only we could say the same thing about your lab partner. But wait, that's not all. Modern oscopes like the Tektronix TBS 1032B have an even easier measurement technique for the morbidly lazy among you. If performing manual unit conversions isn't your style and dragging cursors around a screen seems too exhausting for you, you can always let the oscope automatically measure the property of interest for you. Press measure in the operations group. Inside the measurement menu, we are presented with a huge array of available automatic measurements. Navigate through the list using the multifunction knob and select the properties of interest by pushing the multifunction knob. Don't select too many though, because as you'll see, it kind of clogs up the screen. Let's select period, minimum, maximum, and peak to peak. A small check mark appears next to the selected properties. When we collapse the menu, we're instantaneously gratified with automatic measurements of our desired properties without the toil of unit conversion nor the labor of dragging cursors around the screen. As we observed earlier, we're experiencing a maximum value of positive 6.6 .6 volts, a minimum value of approximately negative 6.2 volts, a peak-to-peak -peak value of 12.7 volts, and a period of approximately 20.1 milliseconds. While extremely quick, my one complaint about this automated measurement technique is that too many measurements quickly obstruct the screen. I encourage users to make the measurement of interest and then unselect it as soon as they're done.
This way the workspace remains uncluttered and you can let the oscilloscope do what it's good at, namely displaying a picture of voltage waveform under inspection. Final point before we bring this lecture to a close. Which is more accurate, your DMM or your oscilloscope? Let's say the DMM is saying exactly 4.5 volts RMS at exactly 50 Hertz but your oscilloscope is saying exactly 6.5 volts peak with a period of exactly 20.1 milliseconds. If you're as well versed in conversion between peak and effective and period and frequency and vice versa as I expect you to be, you realize these values aren't that far off from each other, but the question remains, who do you trust more, the DMM or the oscilloscope? The answer is trust no one. They're both wrong but both instruments are doing their best to represent the waveform under inspection in some usable fashion, the point being that there will be slop, but there shouldn't be a lot of it. Don't make a big deal about a 0.1 volt or a 0.1 millisecond differential. This being said, if you've pulled one piece of equipment out of the back of an electronics museum and dusted it off, the other one is right out of the box with a fresh calibration certificate the one with the most recent calibration is obviously the one to put the most trust in. Most, not all. Finally, as I demonstrated in this example, don't trust your function generator. We observed that the function generator was actually producing a slightly top-heavy, slightly imbalanced sine wave. Additionally, expect slight drift and minor variations in frequency and amplitude over time as things get warm, cold, wet, dry, bumped, diddled, or dorked with. Don't for a moment assume things remain stable in all conditions and realize the primary purpose of special purpose instrumentation like the oscope is to make you aware of these subtle changes that might otherwise escape your notice. All right, that's about it for measurement techniques using an oscilloscope. We'll be making use of these techniques in later lectures to measure the electrical characteristics of elements within AC circuits. In conclusion, this lecture examined the manual method of measuring properties like peak value, peak-to-peak -peak value, period, and frequency using an oscilloscope, as well as faster methods like amplitude and time cursors, and user-selectable automatic measurements. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.